everybody. My name is Tara, and I am an S1 from Dalvin Academy in Abbeville. And today I'm going to tell you a bit about some experiments I've done throughout primary first. Now, what I've done is chromatography first. And chromatography is basically splitting colors. I found out that black is not really a solid color. It's built up of different colors, which you may have not known, you may have known. For technology, I've done a stop motion film competition in which my group came second in. It was really hard to make the models and all that, but it was quite a lot of fun. First of all, we had to take a photo of it, then move it. Finding the sound was really hard. My group may have had different opinions, but in the end, it all worked out well, seeing as we came second. Right, on to engineering. In engineering, um, I was basically in the Young Leaders Award, which is basically finding an invention and making it. So my invention was called the Pencil Finder. And what it did was find, basically you type in the color you wanted, and it finds the color you asked for. For so example, blue. You type in blue, and the machine scans the pencil box and finds it. It was not really a good idea, but it was fun to make. <laughs> Right, let's go, to, let's go on to secondary now. Firstly, I done a Vitamin C tablet rocket, which is basically like a physical rocket, which I've also done, but on a larger scale. And here's how you make one. First of all, get a cylinder container with a lid, put in a small or a large amount of water in, can be hot or cold, quickly drop in the tablet, open the packet to the lid, shake it and wait, and you'll experience a chemical reaction. In technology, I've, I've been making a birdhouse out of wood, and I've been using saws and other, other equipment you probably find in like a woodworking sta station. Um, it's a bit hard, but it's okay. Now, on to the graphics part. We have been drawing boxes, straight lines, and one point perspectives, and also two point perspectives and um, sorry, circles, and we've also been doing some rendering. Now, for death, I really like STEM so much. And in the future, I want to be able to get a job at St. Andrews University. Sorry, I want to go to St. Andrews University. And I also want to work at NASA to experience some sort of other chemical things to do with chemicals and science. Thank you. Hello, everyone. My name is Robbie. Um, I'm an S5 at Southern Academy. And like Kara, um, I'm going to take you through my journey of STEM. Um, like Kara said, my first memory of primary of doing science was the Bitman C bottle rocket, where they fizz off and then shoot off into the sky. This was so exciting for my tiny brain, I couldn't get enough of it. Um, now, since I'm a little bit older, I can't remember anything else that I've done in primary. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to set for next. And this is from the start of S1, where I, I did something called the Gopher Lab, um, where S1s teach primary sevens how to do certain science experiments. This helped massively because I was quite nervous going into S1, it was a big change. Um, but since the Gopher Lab gave me responsibility, it helped to ease my nerves, and also I got to do sevens for the So um, Next up, I remember anyway, is the Scottish Math Challenge. Um, this was a competition in the whole of Scotland, which fortunately enough I done quite well. Um, which it taught me that maths isn't about just doing boring sums, just one as one, two as two. It can actually be applied to real life problems. Most recently, um, I took part in Academy Nine, which is um, responsible for fueling the A Nine. Um, we built bridges, we learned about different engineering roles, um, and the main thing that I took away from it was how diverse engineers can be and how much it matters, which helped a lot. Um, in total, I think the STEM experiences have shaped me a lot, because um, throughout all the experiences I've had, I've um, wanted to pursue STEM through medicine, through the research area. Um, and I am currently, currently doing um, lots of sciences, so hopefully that's time to step. 
Thank you for this. It's okay? Yeah, I'm just going to take the hear uh, Can I just thank Cara and Robbie again for that fantastic uh, introduction? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, Cara and Robbie have been at the Alvin Academy since time they won, and I think even nursery. <laughs> Um, so that they truly have had that all through the experience um, that we hope to share with you tonight. Tonight? This afternoon? <laughs> <laughs> I've ahead of myself already. Um, I've just got a couple of things that I've been asked to say. First of all, uh, welcome to the Scottish Learner Festival 2019, organised by Education Scotland. Uh, my name is Lorna Laveri. I have been the principal teacher of science at the Alvin Academy for 12 years. And on Monday, I actually started a new role in acting DHD. <laughs> it's been a busy week. Um, just a reminder to delegates that if you're sharing your um, positive learning festival experience on social media, use hashtag FLFMT. That's the housekeeping that I have here. Um, so I am going to give you a very brief introduction to our school. Um, I will introduce a number of speakers this afternoon that have come along to share their STEM experience and to hopefully uh, show you how uh, that can be done and how we can uh, have pupils like uh, Tara and Robbie with the experience that they've gained in STEM. Um, the Dalvin Academy School is at the very heart of our community campus. Um, and we have nursery, primary and secondary, with a role sitting at about uh, 650 pupils at the moment. We've got a, a very wide rural catchment area, um, uh, but we haven't uh, seen that as a problem. In fact, we've actively um, engaged <laughs> in the wider community and made use of all uh, resources and lots around us. Um, we also actually we take in uh, five pupils uh, from the Lockheed High School, so we've got an additional uh, transition, and you'll hear a little bit more about transitions, particularly in STEM, this afternoon. We are um, we were very proud actually to be uh, finalists in the Scottish Education Awards STEM category in 2018, and if I could encourage you to apply and nominate yourself for these awards, I really would, because that has been a, a catapult into all sorts of other experiences. So, uh, you know, one piece of advice I could give would be to get yourself uh, nominated for some of these awards. We um, enjoy um, and are very proud of high attainment at our school, which is linked to our diverse curriculum and the, the abundance of wider experiences that are on offer to all pupils from nursery to grade six, which you will hear of this afternoon. Um, we have a so that's very classic. in the winter <laughs> in the summer. <laughs> uh, so we often have to contend with a little bit of snow. But um, actually this is the year to my side. It's, 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 uh, and I'm from Glasgow, so <laughs> very different. We do have a, a state of the campus. We're exceptionally lucky for all the resources and facilities that we have. Um, we have made a great deal of use of digital technologies, and you'll hear a little bit more about that because um, going for our digital schools awards is one of the one of the um, processes that we're involved in again this year. Um, our school values underpin uh, all of the experiences, so particularly in STEM, and we brought our school values along with us. Um, and these are the values of belonging, believing, aspiring, achieving, and and we we wholeheartedly believe that. Um, this ethos, these values, are uh, permeate through through everything that we do in school, 
and again being fortunate to have youngsters coming in um, at the age of two. We've got quite a journey. <laughs> so I welcome you on our journey through STEM. Uh, I will introduce each of the, the, the different uh, speakers that are going to talk to you this afternoon. Uh, we have obviously pupils, we have practitioners, and we have partners here to talk to you about how we do it. So um, I'd first like to welcome Anna Seaworth. Anna is a, a primary teacher. Uh, Anna loves everything to do with uh, digital technology, so I welcome Anna. So as you could hear from Robbie's experiences, by the time he has journeyed through our school and got to S5, he has not only been involved as a pupil in all the STEM subjects, but he's also begun leading a lot of the learning. We do a lot of work with partnership agencies who come in, such as Academy 9, who Robbie mentioned as well. And so there are lots of experiences for our pupils in day workshops, but also obviously in class lessons from the age of nursery, from the age of two. During days such as the Academy 9 workshops, the pupils are upskilled in their learning, as well as um, the agencies providing insight into the world of work in STEM. And we've seen that our pupils benefit from the team building skills that they learn at these days. Another such day that we had was Planet X, which was led by our STEM ambassadors. <coughs> Academy 9 was led by our S4 people, and then by S6, the people who become STEM ambassadors. Our pupils were also fortunate this past year to have had a day led by Marine Scotland, and we participated in the Young Inventors and Young Engineers Challenges. As well as core days such as these and our Mission to Mars Day here, which was led by one of our primary teachers, the pupils have regular access to outdoor learning. As you can see, we live in an amazing setting for that, so it's, it's fantastic that we can make use of our environment. And in our primary school, these days lead to the John Muir Awards that the pupils can vote for in primary six, and then the Duke of Edinburgh Awards that are secondary parcel. In technology, we're fortunate to have a digital literacy and computer science teacher. So, um, I'm covering the RCCP for all the teachers this past couple of years, and we've found that this has been fundamental in the field progression that we've seen across the primary school, and that's feeding really well into the secondary. This year in particular, our local authority is running us, um, leading us into GLOW and 365, and so we're finding that we, we really did need that, the skills to be put in place from primary to help with this. We find as well that when the pupils become champions in their own learning, they've been able to share these skills and technology with other pupils and indeed with us as teachers. I think gone are the days where the teacher's standing at the front fumbling with the video machine trying to get it to play. It's now the iPad or the Coast Bug or something that's confusing us. And it's amazing how much the pupils can actually teach us. At the Galvin Academy, we recognize how vital it is for our staff to be up to date in the fast-paced changes in technology. And we have digital champion and digital leaders that help with the guidance and training for all staff. As Lorna said, we're currently working towards our Digital Schools Award to gain accreditation for the work that we do, do across our community campus. And we're encouraging our pupil voice in digital learning. Our P7 prefects have recently had a lot studying um, how to use green screen, and they've now set up a news channel so that they can share news of pupil learning with the wider school community. Thank you. Thank you, Anna. Um, I'd now like to invite our uh, uh, principal teacher in the Centre for Technology, Lorna Gibson, and Lorna is going to take you through a STEM teacher's journey. Thank you. Twenty-six years ago, I started my two years of probation in a school in the East End of Glasgow. 
I would love you to pilot a probation timetable and my can-do attitude led me being sent out to the technology expert to feed up primary. I supported the teachers in class, helping develop course material and advising on purchasing equipment. The teachers seemed to appreciate the support in an area that, at the time, <coughs> they felt they lacked knowledge. I thought this was the norm, but with staffing and timetable changes, I could no longer fulfill the rules. After my early experiences, I spent 20 years learning the craft in a number of different schools and departments. I often felt there was an opportunity missed in, in a contact between primaries and secondaries, generally restricted to a transition day where the shy and overawed primary seven visited the department in the big school. I formed a number of interdepartmental links during this time, but felt that we were paying lip service to the concept of STEM through IDL projects and joint activities. We were too protective of what we saw as our areas of specialism and unwilling to throw open the door to the chances and offers. My breakthrough was when I moved back to Godalbin as principal teacher of technology. Unlike previous moves, I did not need settling in time, and as a new PT, I saw the opportunities open to me. I saw my fellow STEM PTs keen to collaborate in more than spoken IDL. An example of the change in mindset I was after was evident in a maths class I joined. I chanced upon one of my maths colleagues late on a Friday, and his face told the story. He had taught an S3 class early in the day, but he felt that if he saw the class as spinning plates, most could hit the ground. And with everyone in the department teaching that period, he felt he couldn't ask for support. I joined the class, and once I dealt with this, what do you know about math? You're a petty teacher. Mindset that I got from pupils, I became the teaching assistant for the rest of the year. Sacrificing a non contact period was worth it to see a happy colleague and pupils who realised that it was not just math teachers understood algebra. We started to engage in activities that involved all STEM subjects, trips between three crossing being an example and it was easy to show our interdependence on each other's subjects. The opportunities in the doorstep were the next area to explore. Being on a campus including a primary and nursery, it seemed that I could, and should, step back to halcyon days of my probation. I offered to be a STEM expert when time and opportunity arose, and the first time was an Ask the Expert session with a primary two class. The teacher expected a project in transport to lead to drawing buses and cars. No. Where does petrol come from? <laughs> How are cars painted? Where does the oil go in my dad's car because he's always filling it? And many others. A primary six class was entered for the Scottish Engineering Leaders Award, and I was asked to give input. The Leaders Award was the pupils developing a solution to a problem they identified. I pointed out that most engineers solve other people's problems. I challenged them to model shelters for use following a natural disaster. This was done with an enthusiasm rarely seen in a secondary class, and the testing with the desktop fan was highly competitive. Every day is a school day, and this is, was evidenced when I started the Level 6 Award during the A9, an introduction for education practitioners which is introduced to me by some of our industry partners. I remember the original A9 that passed through every town and village to the current one, prior to the current one being built in the 70s and 80s. The chance to study the new dual A9 was something I couldn't pass up. I successfully completed three units, but the fourth was a challenge. It read, carry out a practical activity to share or cascade your knowledge about the dueling of the A9 with others in an educational context. Could I make a group of teachers listen to me going into detail about the biggest infrastructure project in Scotland at the moment, or risk being treated by my own people? I took the bull by the horn and presented to three of my classes, and then had to, to take their comments on the chin. 
I insisted on two stars of which, so it wouldn't hurt too much, but they didn't hold back. The payback came the following term. The pupils were entered for the equivalent Level 4 award, the first S2A customised award that was developed, and they showed me how it should be done. Last year, I had a week-long industrial placement with Jacobs, one of our industry partners. For me, it emphasised the ties between our subjects and the opportunities should be grasped. The placement had teachers from primary and secondary sectors, and being able to chat about STEM in such a forum was invigorating. We need to be open to learning from each other, whether primary or secondary teacher, and remember that some of our most important lessons can come from our pupils. My STEM next steps are regarding our pupils' next steps. I say it to the STEM hub, where courses and jobs for STEM subjects are advertised, and I aim to increase football in there. Being rural, the information is not as accessible for our pupils as it could be, and I want to open their eyes to new possibilities for future paths, like graduate apprenticeships. For you, I hope you feel that stepping out of your subject and sector will open doors and join us as STEM teachers. And finally, I must apologise for using the word opportunity too often, but it's all about grasping them. Thank you. Thank you, Lorna. And I would just uh, like to elaborate on and opportunities. <laughs> Um, that actually has evolved into a, a major sort of transition program that we have. Um, back in 2015, an email came in from the Royal Society of Biology talking about four for lab days that could be used as a transition program, and that sparked my interest. What also sparked my interest was the £200 grant that you could apply for from the Biochemical Society to support this. So I embarked on a CPD with a primary colleagues, with secondary teachers to generate this uh, overlap transition day. This allows us to bring in all of our cluster primaries, not just our results and pupils. We trained our S1 pupils as teachers, Robbie being the first S1 year group three to do this. We had a huge event in our assembly hall that involved a lot of different chemical reactions, but the one thing I will remember was a lot of raw cabbage. And I did sit down the toilet and I blocked them, and I had to go to the head teacher and explain how I managed to block the toilet. So, we learn, we learn, <laughs> as is a school team. Where has that led us to now? Well, this is highly sustainable, highly sustainable, because our primary sevens, as they are being taught and led by our S1s, not only is there that engagement throughout that day, that conversation, that importance for our transition, but our primary sevens can become the teachers in S1 and then we the following primary seven years of it through. Uh, we now actually have a transition program from primary seven to S1 that involves five core days, one of which, one of those days is completely dedicated to STEM. Um, and the pupils are able to come and talk and find out and gain experience and practice activities in STEM. An opportunity from an email that turned into this. And I reiterate what Lorna says, the opportunities are out there. It's just a case of uh, grasping them. Um, I am going to uh, now introduce our next speaker. So our next speaker is David uh, McLean. David McLean is the new principal teacher of science at the Melbourne Academy. And David is going to again talk about transition and partnership in transition. David. Thank you, Lorna. I'm smaller than the average bear when it comes to doing this. Um, so, uh, I joined the Dalvin Academy fresh out of probation eight years ago as a 
teacher of physics with science. So one of the things that the Development Academy has done for me is kickstart me as a teacher of STEM. Not just of physics, not just of science, but a teacher of science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. And to that end, with the encouragement of colleagues within the school, a dual qualifying as a math teacher as well, so I could be around and spending time with people to show them that I'm not just a physics teacher, like my colleague Ron Gibson, I am a teacher of all things STEM, and I'm involved in all things STEM. Central to that for me has been partnerships forged throughout the school, internally within the school and externally. Internally, with our nursery, with our primary, and with my colleagues in secondary as well. We are so lucky to have a community campus with pupils aged 2 right the way through to pupils aged 18. And for me, it's an opportunity to be grasped with both hands. But also, local businesses, external partnerships, such as Glenline Coffee, subject close to my heart, Aberfeldy Workshop, and with higher education establishments, two of which I've mentioned here. There are others I will mention in due course. One of the tasks and one of my joys of getting out of my own laboratory, and I don't really want to see this as an excuse for me to get out of my own laboratory, but rather an opportunity for me to be seen by as many of the pupils and with my colleagues as a teacher as them, was a supported STEM transition group. For primary school pupils identified with having specific needs, they could be ASN needs, they could be that they just recently joined our school and we're looking to integrate them into the community in which our school exists and lives in. And so here we have them getting our solar airship, which does, it seems like a giant thing, back into the air and then following it to try and prevent it from going into the school neighbor's gardens. Also playing with our steam engines, but really just an opportunity for our primary pupils to come into our secondary building, which is a five minute walk along the corridor, and to work with secondary staff. Another quote unquote excuse for me to be out of my laboratory, anything which flies is going to appeal to me, is the air tire rockets. And an email from a primary four teacher to say they wanted to do rockets almost had me at the front door within about 30 seconds of the email going thing. And here we have our pupils working on the rockets, going outside and launching them to see who could get them the highest into the air. At all times here as well, there's the opportunity for our secondary pupils to be joining staff down or across in our primary and in our nursery to support the work of our colleagues and the work of myself and to support our young people as well. In secondary, and uh, we used to go and play with cars really, um, but also an opportunity to forge partnerships and transitions within STEM is our Formula 24 project. A car which has been built based on a chassis which we have got from Green Power Formula 24 has been built by our pupils themselves. The body panels were designed by our pupils and they were manufactured by the Aberfeldy Workshop, a partnership and a transition that we've been forging in our school for many years. This car has raced successfully at East Fortune and has picked up a couple of trophies. The duct tape really was required, courtesy of a minor accident as well. That's a learning experience for our pupils. It doesn't always go right. However, we were lucky enough to win three trophies and be granted qualification to the international final in Rockingham. This was an opportunity for our pupils to meet transition partners right across the piece. For example, Jaguar Land Rover, who fielded the team in this particular event, and to also wipe the floor with us in Rockingham. But it's the taking part that matters. Right to the other end of the spectrum, if I may call it that, is in S6. Another subject which for me is close to my heart is the Science Baccalaureate. A project, an opportunity for pupils to drive their own project in something which interests them specifically. I mentor pupils, and that is where I consider my sole role to be. 
the project is driven by them, they choose it, they produce the outcome. And for me, it's an opportunity for them to learn about forging their partnerships out with of our school in a situation which they might find themselves when they leave our establishment. We have a list of most recent partnerships which have been founded. Glen Ryan Coffee, where people last year produced a software package that allows Glen Ryan Coffee to work out its carbon footprint. They work very closely with Glen Ryan Coffee for this, as that coffee roastery is looking to become one of the first carbon neutral roasteries. They have their roastery a five minute walk from the school building, and it was a great opportunity for the people to be involved in a project such as that. Um, and he had the opportunity to present at the coffee festival in Glasgow uh, in June that has just passed, uh, which made me very jealous. Um, we also have partnerships with NHS. Pupils, for example, are considering careers in medicine, as Robbie mentioned, in medical science, have the opportunity to undertake projects that are involved with medicine. This year we have two pupils doing just that, one studying the science and impact of depression, which will be a very harrowing project, but one where the people will gain a great deal of maturity to driving that forward, and one a pupil who is studying ASD and its impact within the classroom. And they will be aid with other schools, GPs, but we also had a people who look at cancer treatment and spend a lot of time in Nightwell Hospital liaising with partners there. She's currently in her second year of a medical degree. Local vets, we've mentioned Balfour BC and Academy 9. We've got people at this time round who are doing the project looking for dueling of the A9, a political hot potato, it would be happy to say. And he's going to try and look at how the A9 feet dual past the path of Burnham. And so you'll gain experience in what it's like to liaise with communities as well as the engineering side. FSE from Griffin Wind Farm and also local universities. I think local and inverted commas there, as Ron has mentioned, in a rural setting. So we already have a local university per se, but some decent Andrews and Edinburgh have all assisted in baccalaureate projects. And for me, these have been partners for transitions for pupils who are leaving our school, as well as partners for transitions of pupils as they come right to us. So, thank you very much. Uh, we, we have been entry pupil to the Frank Baccalaureate Scottish Science Centre since it started. Uh, and again, it's something that I would encourage. Um, there can be somewhere between 80 to 90. Uh, entries in a year, and I think this year we are currently sitting at eight people. Uh, six people. Six people. Yeah. So, um, you know, again, it, it's another opportunity, it's another experience uh, for your curriculum. Um, I'd now like to introduce Monica Young. Uh, Monica Young is a project officer at Brazilian Academy, uh, focusing on wider achievement and equity. Monica. Hi, so um, I'm not a teacher, and I've never been a teacher, so um, I don't know who let me in or what I'm doing here, but anyway, part of my role involves developing partnerships with employers and finding ways to set that into our curriculum. So last year we worked with over 40, we worked with over 40 businesses across the whole school, but these are some of our same partners. We have about 13, 14 partnership agreements. We have a lot of people we can phone and get a bit of funding, maybe, or get a work placement, get people to come to our peers there. But these are people who have at least two or three engagements for the school, primary, secondary, even in nursery. They're on the end of the phone if we need a bit of help and advice, and, and we can really rely on them. I could stand here and give you many shiny examples of partnership working, but I don't want to do that because I think we've heard about how much they mean to our curriculum and how much input they have. So I think that instead what I'll do is try and tell you how we do it. How do we get all these people to work with us? Where do we find these projects from? Because we are a rural school. We sit in about a thousand square miles and for the most part it's a whole lot of you know, 
and we had to work pretty hard to get people to come to our school and, and be part of our curriculum. So, in nursery and primary, we really learned to keep it simple. We learned to remove barriers and to focus on possibilities and potential, to really try and infuse our pupils from a very young age with the same subject. We've learned that local is best, largely because it's more accessible and more relevant to the pupils. We've learned that employers prefer to work on projects with the pupils at that age, rather than just come in and do a random input. They prefer to work on topic work, so we create projects that, are, that evolve from, from topic work and relate that to the work that they really focus they can. Employers like it because there's a specific ask in terms of input and commitment. And if they can find a common goal and the engagement from the people, it's much better as well. Second is the difference of kettle fish, so getting very careful planning. So in the NGE, we have a universal approach. So every pupil receives at least one high value input across S1 to 3. That one input across three years, not one input every year. And we based that on nine broad employment schemes that we identified by looking at local and national employment data. This is just a minimum requirement. Inevitably, we end up doing much more because some things are just too cool not to do sometimes. Um, and it's all about taking the opportunity, like my colleague said, when we arrive. In the senior, senior phase, we really drill it down and it becomes more about your goals rather than just the sectors because we want to raise people's awareness about future pathways and how they can choose what they need in order to get into the school. We also do it, we also target, make the input targeted because it's less to shut the timetable. So actually in the senior phase, if it doesn't happen, if it can't be done in a double period, it doesn't happen. Because we don't want them out, out of time because they're out of time at such important time. So that's lots of partners, lots of engagement and lots to manage. But there's one thing principle and that's mutual benefit. So everyone involved in the partnership or the project gains something. We believe it's that focus on mutual benefit that allows us to be so successful and to develop so many unique opportunities for our people, but most importantly, to sustain them over a long period of time. I would say it's really important to know your school, each department, for me, and I'm not a teacher, so with a business hat on, I look at them like what a business is up the room. So what do they need? What are, they, what are their aims? What's driving them forward? And I try to find partners to match those expectations. It's important to know your partners and your business community because by knowing them you can tease out opportunities. STEM is everywhere, everywhere. I had no idea about this. I didn't even know what STEM was before I started working in school. Um, but because we know our community so well, we can do things like uncover a time stack or a project at a little coffee research. What we've done really essentially is just throw open the doors in the windows. We've let people in and we've let people out. And we've enabled that exchange of knowledge and experience system. We manage it through three year partnership agreements, five years in some cases. But it can be managed, and once, that, once those partnerships are secure, we can really allow them to influence our sector. Thank you. Our, our final uh, speaker is uh, Sarah Morgan from Jacobs Academy 9, who was uh, mentioned already this afternoon. And Sarah is um, Divisional Director for Stakeholder Engagement and Communication, or as our head teacher likes to say, a very important person. <laughs> Hi there, thanks everyone. Wow, listening to this tale, I don't know how these guys do it in the time they have. Um, I am here today to represent Academy 9. The um, Academy 9 program is a Scottish Government program on the back of A9 Dueling. So it's funded by Transport Scotland. And what that's enabled us to do is 
primarily engage with schools on the E9 corridor to see Perth and Inverness to complete our project to see it's part of the legacy from this road building project. It would be the biggest infrastructure project to date in Scotland at two billion pounds. So on the back of that there is hope for us to do something really cool. Um, the program is award winning now. We were recognised last year in the British Construction Industry Award for our educational program. And it's currently made up of full, four full time equivalent education liaison officers and over a hundred early career professionals supporting us. Do you see a level of input we're able to bring in the diversity? Um, it's founded on a platform of growth mindset, resilience and well-being and that is threaded through each and every activity that we provide into the school. And I think that's important because that is something that distinguishes us. These are not a series of discrete interventions. One builds to the next and at the moment we go from major three to PhD. So the young people were now starting to see Robbie said he was at our event last week. Um, we are now starting three, uh, so we're, we're five to six years in, we're seeing young people coming through the programme and building. The activities that we deliver, so we start right about T4 with our gateway activity where young people come in and they take part in six carousel activities across the morning. The SBs in the school run the day, we work with them the day before, leadership, communication, team working type skills and they come in then and they meet the little ones who come from all the feeder primaries. That's usually their first transition activity. The first time these new ones have been up in the big schools and they get to join together as a form of future S1 cohort. Our T6 roadshow classroom based activities, uh, they get to try being trainee geologists, ecologists and highways engineers again on a carousel basis usually supported by young professionals and the education liaison officers. All the materials for that roadshow are available on our website and have been written in such a way that any teacher can pick them up and run with them. And we are seeing that more widely. Several schools in North Lanarkshire this year contacted us and we loaned out materials for them to run it themselves. World Time Planning Day at Senior One, four week programme based in the geography department but with close links to computing science, where they are learning to work in groups and understand and appreciate the challenges and the competing priorities in a community where something is to be built or developed. Who says what's most important? How do we fit? And they use ICT to report the results on the final judging day. The Apprentice Academy at S3 is the biggest of our events, running for three days, which we just completed at Bedalgen recently. The pupils go through a series of micro, mini and mega challenges culminating in a celebration event with the wider school community to the test of bridges to destruction. But that's where the real focus comes on mindset and resilience. These young folks, you've got three days with them, we can actually really move that learning forward. And then finally the next steps workshop which we ran, was it last Friday or the one before? <laughs> week before where we are coming in, and this one in particular was developed hand in hand with the Dalvin. Dalvin seems slightly different to a number of other schools on our programme in that they have a truly collaborative approach to how we develop and evolve these, these events. These five are our activities, we do a lot more and, and, and some of the speakers today have touched on those things like the teachers unit, the pupils unit, what have you. But next step is a conversation between Monica and I one day. We've got these careers and education standards and some of the outcomes, I'm not sure how we're going to get them for our young people. And we pulled in Jacob the HR team, we put, pulled in our learning and development team and we put together a half day of activity around CV writing, interview skills, your own personal skills and quality, self-awareness and resilience. We've just run it for the third year and I think we've now got it right. So we learn, we do the activity, we listen to the pupils, we listen to the teachers. What worked, what didn't, what's changed in the school? That key to Academy 9. Academy 9 is at the moment a 10 year programme and we're in year 5. Our focus moving forward is wider engagement with T6 
teachers uh, and the wider school community because when we finish up, when the funding dries up, we want the work we've done to be sustainable, we want it to continue. So to that end, no. Okay, it's all right. We are working to um, pull together with the Dalvin on their skills framework that they are currently working up. They've spent a year or so joining together with 12 new skills we would like all the young people to leave school with. We're now working hand in hand with them to develop a three year program to launch that, but to really support the teachers and pupils in leading on the launch of that from an angle of if you get resilience right, you get well being right in your school pupils, there are other skills and policies can flourish. So we bring that angle, the schools in the skills angle, and we're now going to deliver a three year program with them. Year one, a lot of input from us. Year two, more equal. By year three, the school is running it and we'll be in a backup capacity and then it should fly. So it's just an example of how when you do get collaboration right, <laughs> when you have the right mindset in the staff of the school, you can really grab on to what industry can potentially bring. Now, Jacob Engineering, 1,500 staff in an office in Glasgow, we're not all engineers, I think, that like as a geologist. We also bring that wealth of training and development expertise, HR and these other functions, and can help with the training young people for the world of work. But it needs to be collaboration for it to work well, and we experience that as a Dalton. Thank you. So, to, to sum up, um, could I just offer one other piece of practical advice in taking STEM forward, and that's to have a STEM working group. Um, we established that, that STEM working group has been running now for four years. Uh, and that's a collegiate group um, where we have representation from uh, all sectors, primary, secondary. We have pupil representation, all our key stakeholders. Um, and we have our partners that are all part of that, that project, uh, sorry, that working group. So that, that is definitely something that, that you could take, take forward. Um, we are, and Hazel is here yesterday, um, we are absolutely delighted that we have been invited to register as a, a pilot school for the, the STEM Nation Awards this academic year. And uh, that's going to continue our, uh, our STEM journey. And we're really excited um, about looking at the evidence we currently have and then what we can do uh, to work towards gaining that full award in the next few years. So we're really, really excited about that. And if you want to know any more about that, he's okay. <laughs> um, I'd just like to take the opportunity to thank again um, my, my colleagues, our partners, our pupils. We, we've got one fantastic team, and I get quite emotional about it because they're a great bunch. Um, Robbie and uh, Cara on your way out, uh, they have a, a balloon for you and a, 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 just a little leaflet. Um, should you have any uh, further questions or follow-up, there's information on that leaflet that you can get in touch with the school.